China, itinanggi na nabutas ang kanilang barko. Financial assistance ng Amerika, posibleng umabot sa mahigit 2.5 billion US dollars. US top officials, ipinangako ng makikipagtulungan sa AFP modernization program ng ating bansa. Yan ang mga bagay na pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Kaya't kung bago ka pa lang sa ating channel, ay mag-subscribe ka na at i-click mo na rin ang notification bell para lagi kang updated sa mga kaganapan at modernong kagamitan na ating pag-uusapan. Matapos ang banggaan ng barko ng Pinas at China Coast Guard na ating napag-usapan sa huling video na kung saan ay naibahagi natin ang litrato Nakuha sa isang barko ng China Coast Guard na nagtamo ng isang pinsala dahil sa pagkakabangga nito sa barko ng Philippine Coast Guard. At kahapon lang ay binasag na ng China ang kanilang katahimikan. Ayon sa China ay hindi umano nagtamo ng malalang pinsala ang kanilang barko at hindi din umano ito nabutas o nayupi. Ang makikita lang umano sa litrato ay ang pinturang natanggal dahil sa pagkakasagi ng dalawang barko. Sa kabila nito ay hindi naman kumbinsido ang maraming Pinoy sapagkat klarong-klaro naman sa litrato ang napakalaking butas na natamo ng kanilang barko. Sa ating palagay ay nais lang siguro ng China na pagmukain na hindi low quality ang kanilang mga barko kaya't idinay-dinay nila na nabutas ito. Sa ngayon ay wala pa rin pahayag ang Philippine Coast Guard kaugnay dito. Sa kabilang banda naman, nitong nakarang araw ay inihain ni United States Senator Bill Hagerty at U.S. Senator Tim Kaine, members ng U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, ang Philippine Enhanced Resilience Act of 2024 o PERA Act. Ang bill na ito ay naglalayon na mas mapabilis ang modernization effort ng ating AFP sa pamamagitan ng pagpapataas ng U.S. security assistance sa ating bansa. Ito ay kasunod ng mas tumataas na tensyon sa West Philippine Sea. Ayon kay Hajer T, na nahaharap na yon ang Pinas at Amerika sa isang malaking hamon sa West Philippine Sea na dulot ng mga agresibong galaw at pag-aangkin ng China sa lugar. At bilang magkaalyansa umano at may malalim na pinagsamahan ay nararapat lang umano na mas paigtingin pa ng US ang tulong nito sa ating bansa. Kapag naipasa na ito at naging batas na ay makakatanggap ang Pilipinas ng 500 million US dollars na foreign military financing grant assistance mula sa Amerika taon-taon mula 2025 hanggang 2029. Kung susumahin ay posibleng umabot sa 2.5 billion US dollars ang magiging financing assistance ng US sa Pinas sa loob lang ng limang taon. Sapat na ito upang mapondohan ng ating gobyerno ang mga big ticket projects ng ating AFP tulad na lamang ng multi-role fighters, submarine, warships at iba pa. Samantala, sa ginanap na 3 plus 3 ministerial meeting sa pagitan ng Pilipinas at Amerika ay muling ipinangako ng US na mas pagtitibayin pa nila ang suportang ibibigay para sa AFP Modernization Program ng ating bansa. Well, good morning everyone. Uh, Secretary Manalo, uh, Secretary Teodoro, uh, Advisor Anyo, wonderful to welcome you here to the State Department. Uh, today's meeting follows the meeting between our presidents yesterday and the historic uh, trilateral meeting with uh, President Marcos, um, Prime Minister Kishida, and President Biden. And I think uh, today's meeting, uh, an unprecedented three plus three, reflects the growing and deepening cooperation between our countries on a broad array of issues. And of course, our shared commitment uh, to a free and open Indo-Pacific, uh, including in the South China Seas. Uh, we very much welcome this opportunity to uh, pursue that cooperation, collaboration, and of course we stand with the Philippines uh, in our ironclad defense commitments, including the Mutual Defense Treaty. Uh, Ricky, with that, let me welcome you and give you the microphone. Thank you very much, Tony. Good morning, uh, Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, National Security Advisor. 
Jake Sullivan. Great pleasure to be here with my colleagues. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, in a way, today's meeting of the 3 plus 3 is also a historic meeting, as it follows on the heels of the even more historic trilateral summit yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to, to mention that uh, we attach a lot of importance to this meeting, especially in the light of uh, recent developments in the South China Sea, especially uh, the China's escalation uh, of its harassment resulting most recently in the injury of four Filipino seamen. But uh, more importantly is we, we are determined to uh, assert our sovereign rights, especially within our economic, uh, exclusive economic zone uh, and in accordance with the uh, UMCLOS and the arbitral ruling. Uh, I think our meeting today will enable us to uh, hopefully uh, be in a better position to coordinate our responses, both diplomatic uh, and on the defense and security fronts uh, in relation to any uh, actions uh, the South China Sea, whether they're positive or negative, uh, including in the Yuan Shoal. So we uh, also hope that uh, this 3 plus 3 meeting will uh, be a regular event and also um, reinforce our regular uh, bilateral strategic dialogue as well as our ongoing maritime dialogue. And finally, we, we do underscore the need to continue um, uh, further clarificatory discussions on the MDT as we think this would also help in uh, deterring further escalation by uh, China. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, good morning, and it's great to be here with everyone. It's a, this is a historic meeting. It's the first time that all six of us have gathered to discuss the diplomatic and defense priorities at the heart of our alliance. Under the leadership of President Biden and President Marcos, our alliance is stronger than ever. And today we'll discuss a whole of government vision for this alliance. We all know that our shared security relies on strong military bonds, shared economic opportunities, and robust people-to-people -people ties. And at the Department of Defense, we're working in lockstep with our colleagues at the Department of National Defense to strengthen interoperability between our forces, to expand our operational coordination, and to stand up to, coer to coercion in the South China Sea. And our commitment, as uh, Secretary of State said just a couple of seconds ago, our commitment to our mutual defense treaty with the Philippines remains ironclad. And later today, I'll be hosting President Marcos at the Pentagon, and I'll share with you what I'm going to uh, sh tell him, and that is that the United States and the Philippines are more than allies. We're family. And thanks again, and I look forward to a great discussion. Thank you very much. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Secretary Blinken and Secretary Austin, uh, our honorable counterparts and colleagues. Following off from what uh, Secretary Austin had already said, it's indeed an honor to represent the Department of National Defense of the Philippines in this historic uh, meeting today. And it will be an opportunity to have a fresh, open, and candid discussion of our department's objectives in line of the broader strategy of a free and open Indo-Pacific, uh, because this is the area where interests converge. And in doing so, we hope that the family becomes a stronger family with bonds of a shared vision, not only for today, but for the future generations. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank my Philippines counterparts for being here. I want to say I'm honored to be at this unprecedented 3 plus 3 meeting. And our presidents, each of our presidents, tasked us to work across our governments and then to work across this alliance to make sure that we not only reaffirm the alliance between the US and the Philippines, but we put the alliance commitments at the heart of it into practice, that we operationalize it, that we execute it, and that we do so entirely in lockstep. So I look forward to the discussion today. Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, NSA Sullivan. First, allow me to thank the United States government for hosting the historic inaugural Trilateral Leaders Summit yesterday. I'm honored for the opportunity to be part of the whole process that began during the inaugural Trilateral National Security Advisors Meeting in Tokyo last June. Using this momentum, we are now here for another milestone, the first 
bilateral three plus three ministers meeting. So thank you also for hosting this occasion, and I look forward to our insightful and fruitful discussions. This will further concretize our deepening security partnership and enduring alliance grounded on shared democratic values and aspirations of our peoples with activities carefully curated to achieve our collective, collective goals. Thank you and magandang umaga.